Today on Community Cooking, we have guest chef Ann Apra back in the kitchen to whip up a fun menu of sweet and savory tartines. First, we have a caramelized pear, brie, and honey tartine, then a roasted heirloom cherry tomato tartine. We're cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community, so grab a seat and get comfortable. We have another great meal for you. This is your Community Cooking. Welcome to Community Cooking. I'm your host, Maria Prekajis, and I'm always excited to have back in our kitchen guest chef and I can call great friend Ann Afra. Welcome. Thank you. I love that I'm back, Maria. It's so good to see you again. It's so much fun to have you in. You always make such fabulous dishes, healthy dishes. Yes. Because I have to mention you're a personal chef and caterer. That's right. And you have a lot of clients, of course. Who like to eat healthy. They like to eat healthy, they like to stay fit, and they want it to taste good. Well, and that's the most important part about having you here, ah. is it always tastes good. And today, it's all about the tartine, I just like to say it. Isn't it fun? Tartine. Tartine. It's French. Uh, we're going to do sweet and savory, but we're going to start with the sweets. Yes, we are, because life deserves a sweet start. I love it. So first, <laughs> tell me ingredients. You got it. So for our tartine, our star, of course, is the bread, which is our open-faced sandwich. Tartine means an open-faced okay. fancy sandwich. And I came up with these ideas because I thought it'd be really fun to have something healthy and, uh, and, and one bite for having parties and whatnot. So we have our star, okay. nice whole grain bread. You can use whatever bread you want. And this um, one looks like a sourdough-ish That is. French. That's for our savory. Oh, so we're okay. going to come back to that guy. He's, he's the star of the next segment. Then we have our pears. You can use Bosque or Anjou. An, how do you say Bless that? you. Thank Anjou. You. Anjou. <laughs> Merci. It's the French day. Bosque or Anjou or any pear you have. They don't have to be too ripe. We have triple creme brie. Oh, oh. voila. Of course, a French. Some beautiful raw honey and a selection of fresh herbs. This particular one is going to incorporate some uh, chopped rosemary and some fresh thyme. Well, and, you know, it's healthy. There is a little brie, but the French, last time I was there, you don't need a lot, and you walk, and it's just all about balance. Exactly. Balance is everything. And who doesn't love some brie? Who doesn't okay. love some brie? Speaking of brie, would you like to cut some up I for me? I will. We're going to make these, like I mentioned, more of a bite-sized tartine rather than a full dinner size. Okay. So what I like to think about is have your bread and your brie kind of match each other. Okay. So I'm going to make this just about like that size. So this okay. is would be your template for how you would you would cut in thickness, maybe a little thinner than that. It's about an eighth of an inch. Okay. Take. Oh, I'm going this side. Duh. Yeah. Well, I need to make a bunch of uh, slices and then okay. cut them to order, if you will. And then we're going to lightly toast this in an oven, which I have preheated to 375. Okay. And that way we can melt the brie and also toast our bread. So we're making like little mini crostinis because we want our bread to have a little bit of a firm base. And just one piece per? Yes. Beautiful. Is that? That looks great. No, that's It didn't that's quite cover the whole it, thing, it but it doesn't have, have to. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's okay. going to melt and it's going to spread out. Let me just tell y'all a little secret. I love having you here because she always says it doesn't have to be perfect. I, that's so true. I always tell people cooking is an art form. Look, I say that and yet I'm, I'm, I'm arranging everything on the table. Cooking is an art form and you are the artist, so you should uh, make it work for well, you. And I think so many people don't enjoy cooking or even baking because you have to go by a recipe. And I used to be like that. Yes. And then after hosting this show, yes. it's been so great because it's like, what do you have in your fridge? Just get it. Exactly. Don't yeah, waste no. it. It's good food. We have two more pieces of brie. Boom, boom. Now, if you don't oh. mind. I know. And that's the best. The good part, if there's any mistakes, pop mm. them in your mouth. <laughs> so let's pop this in the oven, okay. and we're just going to let it toast for a few minutes and get melty. Okay. And that's what I like about the tartines, too, Maria, is that you don't have to have bread that's super fresh. You can actually use bread that's day old or two days old okay. because we are going to toast it up anyway. I so it's it. a great way to use up leftovers. So while that's toasting, let's get to our Anjou oh, and Boss Pears. Yeah, I think we should do one These of each. Red. Aren't they gorgeous? I love it. So I brought a mandolin today. So I'm not <laughs> Which sure. Which you're using. Yes. But don't be scared because they're 
If you go slow, I think I go too fast in the yes, kitchen. Yes, it's very true. The mandolin is a wonderful kitchen tool, but it can take off a little piece of thumb. So don't do that. So don't do that. So to hand cut it, and this is a very cut. easy way, you take your pear, you hold it nice and firm so it doesn't go rolling around, okay. and you're going to cut just past where you believe the pit might be. Okay. And See, then I always flip try it to over. cut right in the middle. Doesn't no, really put it like that. So that way now it's a flat surface. Okay. All okay. right? And then you take your... Your knife, and you just make some nice smooth slices. About a quarter of an inch yeah, or less. Yeah, okay. not like that much in thickness. Now, because I'm, I want to be able to demonstrate the mandolin. I'll now, because you're one. using the mandolin, and because we're caramelizing them, they don't have to be mushy, ripe, ripe. No, pears. in fact, if you are going to use a mandolin, it's a great way to use your not quite so ripe pears. Okay, because I'm, we're also going to caramelize them, so they're going to get a little bit. Um, they're going to get a nice cooking stint in the uh, oven. And see, your slices are beautiful. And I'm kind of strange because most of my fruit, I like not quite ripe. So this would ah. already be in my kitchen. Perfect. I love using recipes that take advantage of the things that are in your pantry. Yeah. Most of my recipes will build upon what most people normally have in their pantry. And, and the things that get left over. Well, yeah, which is great. And so these we're going to caramelize. So you put a little piece of parchment paper down. I which is did. Nice. Yeah, it just makes your life a little easier in the long run. And I'm going to okay. use the mandolin and do. Now another one. If you're doing larger ones, you can actually cut lengthwise across your brie and make a larger tartine. Okay. Let's see. That's about enough. So this way, they would cover a bigger piece of bread. Oh, cool. Right? I like those, And then those as too. you get closer, you'll get some of the pretty, it'll actually have a little piece of the stem on it, too. They're yeah. very lovely. All right, so all we're going to do with these is we're just going to put them in here. And uh, go ahead and grab a little bit of that honey. Honey, And honey. I want you just to drizzle liberally all over Oh, that. that's easy. Very drizzle, drizzle. And while <laughs> you're doing that, I am going to take some of the rosemary sprigs off of the stem and I'm going to do a very coarse chop, nice and fine. And that's because you don't want to taste, or you want to chew on the rosemary. You just want that wonderful fragrance, that aroma. It's like a big, oh, it smells so big good. lumpers, but that's, that's okay. Because okay. this is a raw honey. It actually has pieces of the honeycomb in it. Oh, I was wondering what that was. Yeah. Some I bees have honeycomb. been busy. They've been busy. All right, so there's my rosemary. I'm also going to do some fresh thyme which I just love. Rosemary and thyme, mm -hmm. I know, don't give up my day job. <laughs> you know? So I'm just going to pinch them right off the stem. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. See? And for these, because they're going to cook down, I don't mind leaving a stem in there. I just think it makes it such so pretty. And since the farmer's market has such a wonderful array oh. of fresh herbs, why not take advantage of what they have there? It doesn't have to be thyme and rosemary. You could pick your favorite flavors. I love rosemary on just about everything. Mm, me too. I have a giant uh, plant in my the, my backyard. There's so many uh, sprigs because oh, I cut over. it all the time. Yeah. And it just begats more. So every time you use it, it just makes more. All right. So that's mm. more than enough. Now I'm going to sprinkle a little of this. And because when we have sweet, or su I like to always have a little savory. Yeah. And that's why I'm going to add a little cracked pepper. Now, and when I think of caramelizing salt. like onions, it's on a stovetop, but this is easier. It's so much easier. You can throw it in the oven and let it go while we work on the next project. And speaking of throwing it in the oven, let's see how our toasts are. Okay. Are they nice and melty? Should I swap them out? Let's swap them out because I know that with the magic of television here, I wanted to have some Ooh. of our pears already ready to go. Oh, I bet those are good. They look oh a little boy. like they're ready. They're nice oh, and melty. They're they are put nice. Them right here. Oh, gorgeous. Look at that. Yum. Oh, that looks so cool. Oh, I love it. Okay, so this I'm throwing some fresh in there. So these I caramelized earlier, and this was just with the boss. Okay. So all we're going to do is we're going to grab a couple of pieces. Look how pretty that is. And you're going to slather it right on top. Oh, you can use that if you want. I will, because why not? It's already got the honey on it. Honey. And you could see how all the herbs have kind of cooked down, so you're not going to oh, be yeah. tasting giant stems or whatnot. It's just that wonderful aromatic flavor that just oh, sends and you to heaven. And the bread is crispy, mm -hmm. but it's not, I mean, yeah. a lot of people. You could still pick it up very yeah, easily. Yeah, and, and it doesn't take a bite out of it. Yeah. And it doesn't crumble everywhere. Exactly, and you don't have to have such a big piece. You can cut it thinner if you toast it. 
because I find that um, the raw, the uh, uncooked tartines, they're yummy, and the bread's usually fantastic, but it's, I, I want more of a crunch, because yeah. the things on top of it usually have uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, weight to them. I'm and being I don't. very liberal with my pears. I love it. Be liberal. And I might throw on just a couple of extra little sprigs of the oh, fresh, so pretty. aren't they lovely? People now, love taking back pictures in the of food. oven. They do just for okay. a few minutes, um, just to basically melt down the uh, brie again and adhere our nice pears to it, and then you serve them warm. So, all right, there I'm you go. Throw these back in the oven. Well, back place to where she them. goes. So while those are melting, it's a great time to go to a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to do the heirloom cherry tomato mm. tartine so don't go anywhere you're watching community cooking <laughs> palm trees coastline craft brews yep this is southern california but this is torrance have you ever driven to a whole other city just for a bowl of ramen because if you haven't that's about to change have you ever been to a beach that feels so much like your own private beach that you're like where has this been all my life welcome my friends to torrance beach so private, you hadn't even heard of it. Have you ever been to a mall that had literally 2.7 million square feet of shopping? Run, don't walk to Del Amo Fashion Center. And get this, Torrance is the actual epicenter of the South Bay's craft brew industry. I guess you could say the brews are just craftier here. We also have a farmer's market that's just as much about the people as it is about the food. And even our museum scene is the best of the South Bay. All this, just 15 minutes from LAX. You'll come for the city, stay for the experience, and leave as a friend. So, are you in? Welcome back to Community Cooking. If you're just joining us, I'm your host, Maria Prekajis, with my great friend and guest chef, Ann Apra. So good to have you here. We started with the tartine. It's all about the tartine today. Wet. Wet. Wet, chef. <laughs> and we just did a caramelized pear and brie. And I'm going to grab them out of the oven because they look all melty and delicious. Wonderful. Yeah, we don't want them to overcook. Just really wanted to oh. get them warm together. That look looks that. amazing. Thank I'm you. Hand that off to sure. you. Sure. I'm just going to put some on our little serving plate. You know, and you always, you're a caterer and a personal chef, but presentation, it doesn't have to look perfect, but plates and a little sprig of this and a dollop of that really go a long way. It just, it means everything. You know, we eat with our senses, right? So I always like to say, it's got to look good to taste good. <laughs> I'm always on sensory overload when you're here, which is a beautiful thing. I think that's enough for us to, oh, maybe one more because then we're going to snack away. That's okay. I'll put these aside. All right. Just so they're up. close. And I will taste those in a bit. Okay. But now we're going to go to the cherry heirloom tomato, roasted cherry heirloom tomatoes. That's a mouthful. It's a mouthful. Roasted heirloom cherry tomato tartine. <sighs> well, and tartine is French Where? for fancy, fancy. Fancy open face <laughs> sandwiches, which is fancy. great and light, which is a, a lovely thing to do for high tea, a little cocktail reception. You can make them for lunch size, or you can just make a one bite little wonder like an appetizer, similar to what we did with our brie tartines. I love it. So, so I have ingredients. An, okay, you got it. So I, I have a rustic uh, sourdough loaf of, uh, of a white bread. You can use any kind of bread you want, uh, sourdough today. We have room temperature chev cheese, which is a goat cheese. So it's mm. got lots of flavor and the creaminess. It really lends itself well with this particular, okay. excuse me, this particular tartine. I have a selection of fresh herbs. We have fresh basil, some more of this wonderful uh, thyme. And I may throw in some more rosemary again. Be an artist. Rosemary it's and thyme go together in a song, so why not? <laughs> Where's the parsley? Uh, and then a selection of our farmer's market fresh yep. heirloom cherry tomatoes. Uh, I love the heirloom ones because look at all these different colors. They're so vibrant. You can oh, have, yeah. And you can usually get these all year long, but they're mm. best in the summer, but you can still get them all year long. If you don't have an heirloom variety available, use regular cherry mm -hmm. tomatoes. Red. It works just fine. Um, and then we have some already peeled garlic. Now you can use as much or as little as you want. Okay. At your own peril. 
<laughs> so well, I'm Greek, so lots of garlic. Exactly. And then peeling it, you see all those gadgets out there. Yes. What's a good way to just peel it? I Well, I've already peeled these, but the best way I find is I just lay it on its side and I give it a good whack, just like that, and it breaks it apart, and then the paper just comes, comes right off. off. You can use the little roly-poly gadgets, but I've it's used just those, as easy. and sometimes I, it's just, I'll, I'll put on my favorite program, I'll get a couple of bulbs of garlic, and let's just, just do it. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's therapy Taylor's for choice. the neurotic chef. <laughs> I love well, it. The first thing we're going to get started with, though, is we're going to slice up this and get these in the oven because we want to okay. get these a little bit crispy as well. Okay. And because I think it's an appetizer uh, vibe that I'm going for today, we're going to cut them in the same size and shape as our caramelized pear. Okay. So I just get rid of the bookends and about the same and bread knife is key. Bread knife is so much easier. You can use your chef's knife, but this, uh, why struggle? Yeah. I, uh, I the chef's should. tool bag is very dense. And look at that lovely, crusty bread. Well, you it doesn't have baguette. to be, I was going to say. Yeah. It doesn't have to be fresh. Absolutely. It doesn't have to be fresh. Again, another thing, what, what am I going to do with my leftover bread? Make tartine. <laughs> so we'll make just a few more. Just like the French do. Well, now, if you wanted to turn these also into crostinis at the same time, say if you're doing, you have the oven on, let's do okay. a couple of different things. Maybe you have a baguette. You would just drizzle a little bit of olive oil on okay. it or brush them on it and throw them in the oven for a few minutes. But these we want we, still a little soft. A little soft. Okay. But we want a little bit of toast to them so that when we spread on our chev cheese, it, will, it won't break through the bread. Okay. So these I'm going to pop in the oven. Pop them in the oven. Pop, pop. Mm-hmm. All right. Yum. All right. I so know. Then, what goes on? Okay. Stop. Now we're going to play with our roasted heirloom tomatoes. So grab a handful of your okay. favorite cherry tomatoes. I'm taking the big green one. Do it. And we're just going to slice them in half. Just in half. Yes. That's and easy. all the different sizes. I like that some are big, some are small, some are bright, some are um, uh, like this lovely, vibrant yellow. I eat these like candy. Oh, they're so too. yummy. They are, and they're good for you. There's lots of vitamins, fiber in them. Well, and you always have things that taste so good, and a few ingredients that I might not think about. Yes. And it's healthy. And again, thanks for coming in because your catering business has gone a little bonkers. Oh, it's been really, really wonderfully busy. Yeah. Well, this is when I'm starting to look into when can I retire. <laughs> but my clients <laughs> don't want me to go. Well, that yeah, why would they once they have you? Exactly. So then the garlic, you just smash it again. I just and smash it's rough. it and chop it. And rather than get another bowl dirty, I just put just it right it. in a pan. And you notice this one I lined with some foil. That's going to help things caramelize a little bit quicker. Okay. Do I was thinking because cleanup's a breeze. And cleanup is a breeze. Oh, yeah. Well, you, go ahead. I drizzle, drizzle, say, drizzle. Just drizzle some olive oil. And I'm going to add a little salt and cracked pepper. Oh, that's quite a bit of salt. And depending on how many people you are having your party for, maybe you'll use a full pint. Maybe you'll use, just use a, a little handful. Speaking of handful, my favorite kitchen tool. Just, They're clean. Don't they worry. They are indeed. All right, and to this, I'm just going to tear in. I'm going to just reuse some of these wonderful herbs since they're right here. Yeah. I'm going to add some uh, basil to it at the end. I don't like to cook basil into something because uh -huh. it, it, it loses its beautiful color. Okay. It's more of a garnish herb. And then maybe I'll also throw in just oh. a little bit of, just for the aromatic, that's the I word of the day, too. I love the rosemary. There we go. We discovered that being Greek, we use a lot of garlic and a lot of lamb. Yes. But my mother and I discovered rosemary on lamb. And then we started putting Ooh, rosemary on everything. everything. And it grows like a weed in the backyard. So, so which I is easy, especially for Southern California weather. May I kindly ask you to toss those into the oven? Yeah. And uh, okay, toss no, them. already tossed stuff. <laughs> and let's check on our bread. If the bread's ready. All right, I'll do a little swap oh, out. Oh, very good. Oh, right, because we have uh, other things in the oven. So, and the bread, like you said, it's not a crostini. Right. It's just got a little bit oh, yeah. of crust to it. Just a little. Just a little. All right. And so it's warm. So spreading it is going to be even easier uh, with the already softened cheese. So. Well, like you said, room temperature. And this is the best. Look at that. I love it. And you can use borson. Do you know about the borson cheese? I do. And they have Very flavored good. borsons. They, oh, yes. So about like that. Okay. Nice and thick. Don't be shy. 
Don't be weapon. shy with the chef. Don't be shy with the chef. There and we Orson, go. Orson, you could, they have that wonderful, sh uh, the shallot and garlic and herb and all that good stuff. Oh, yeah. So just play add. with it. Or you can mix into your own. We could even just do something like that. A little oh. bit of fresh herb into our own, and now we've made our own little borson. How about I that? I love it. I like, I like to just play with things. We could throw in other herbs that you like. Maybe um, you want to add something a sweet element to it. Mm. Why not? Why not? Cinnamon and, and nutmeg if you wanted to do something more for the colder months. Have it on the side with some butternut squash soup. Or whatnot. The next is, time you're coming in, yeah. you might have to do some I'm hungry, I people. I know, I know. With all this. That's the hardest part of coming and cooking and not being oh. able to taste right oh. while everyone's looking. I know. <laughs> it has to be perfectly finished. It does. It does indeed. Oh, yum. Mm -hmm. Now, I love Chevron. Just about anything. And yeah. yeah, the bread is just crispy enough without being yeah. super toasty. Now, you could do feta on this too that would be fun oh. that's another goat cheese and you could add um, the thyme would work well the rosemary would work really well oh, you yeah. could really partner these up with whatever ever you want okay so, so to save time yes. i went ahead and i already roasted up some of these lovely cher cherry tomatoes and let me borrow my spoon and so you see it's got some a little bit of those nice juices in oh. there. So it doesn't need a lot of and time in the oven, but it needs a little longer than we may have. So I'm going to do is I'm going to try and grab a little bit of the red, a little bit of the dark colored one, maybe a little golden. And I'm just going to... That's so nice because it sticks to the cheese as well. Exactly. And I'm going to do a couple more. And if you would do a few of these too, I will chop up some of our wonderful fresh basil. And you don't need to put the tomatoes all the way to the no, edge. No, in fact, it's better to have a place where they can just pick up. Okay. Kind of like a pizza crust, you know, where you have a, a little handle. A little <laughs> handle. A little handle. You need a handle mm -hmm. for your tartine. Our tartine. And I think I've shown you this before. We're going to do a little chiffonade of basil. And I'll demonstrate that again for One our my friends at home. favorite words. Mm, chiffonade. It's very French today, isn't it? I oh, tell la you. Oui, oui. So I'm just taking the larger leaves off of some beautiful farmer's market fresh herbs and I'm going to roll them up. I put, I stack them up and then I just roll them like a little cigar and I'm going to take a nice sharp chef knife. This one still has some garlic on it. Yum. Oh yeah. And I'm just going to make really thin smooth strokes so as not to bruise the leaves. Oh, okay. And... It smells great. Of course, we have the perfect amount. Of course. Of course, because right. it's you. Beautiful. Now, I think it'd be kind of fun because we've talked about it before, and we have them right here. I think we have a gift of time. I might do a gift of time in rosemary. <laughs> I just, oh, I just made that up you. right off the top I of my it. head. <laughs> it's always something fun when you're here. There always is. Yeah. So, similar to our caramelized brie and pear, I'm okay. going to partner this as well into it because I have it left over. Why if you want to use in? completely separate flavors, you absolutely may. But again, this is going to have that wonderful aroma oh. as it's starting to roast in the oven. You'll smell it. Your guests will walk in. Their stomachs are going to start grinding. Well, that's the best thing when you walk into someone's house. I'm sure your house always smells good. Oh, boy. And you're there, and just the aroma of everything that's comes right. together. It's it's that You eat with all of your senses. Yes. You, know, you eat with your eyes, but you really trigger a lot of stuff by the visual and also the smell. Well, All right, so, so I'm cute. reserving this till we do our little uh, plating up, but perhaps okay. now we could do a swap and So these go back in the oven. Pop them in the oven just so we can get everything just a little bit Warm. melty. You can even pop it in a broiler. We still have a 375 degree oven right now working, so I think that that will be just fine for us. Perfect. And I'm going to set these Oh, those aside. are great. Those are great. Yeah, those could roast Ooh. a little more, but look at the color on these. Look at how vibrant. And it's I mean, already in. They're beautiful. not even... Awesome. They really are beautiful. All right, well, while those get warmed up, we're going to clean everything up and take a break and go to my favorite part, the tasting Yay. of the tartines. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. You're watching Community Cooking. Alexa, how do you tell if asparagus is still good? If it's not moldy or slimy, it's okay to eat. Enable the new skill from Save the Food on your Amazon Alexa and help fight food waste.
Welcome back to Community Cooking. My friend, chef and caterer Ann Apra has taught me all about the tartine today. Fancy, fancy French sandwich. Ooh la la. Open face. <laughs> or appetizer sides. Yes. So we have our pear, caramelized pear and brie. Mm -hmm. And you just plate it up fresh out of the oven, the roasted cherry heirloom tomato. Yes. With the chev cheese. That's right. And we're just going to finish it before we do our favorite part of the show, which is the tasting. We love the tasting. So I love to add just a little cracked pepper on top of it. It just okay. kind of gives it a little more brightness and that nice crunch and bite. Yum. And then a little the drizzle. olive oil yeah. still here. Just a little drizzle just to give it a little gloss. And I, so you can use avocado oil. You can use... Um, uh, grape seed oil. You can omit the oil altogether. I just okay. love the look and the sheen of it all. And then, of course, the little chiffonade of our fresh basil. Would you like to help me with that? And you don't like to cook the basil. No, because it turns colors. It turns this dark color, and uh, it doesn't have that bright, fresh flavor. And it also looks so pretty. And again, oh. we eat with our eyes, so you can go crazy Well, with I'm going to eat with my mouth right now. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I think I might join uh, you. Cheers. cheers. Ooh. Mmm. 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 Wow. Mm hmm The flavor of the roasted heirloom cherry tomatoes. Mm hmm That's amazing. It brings out the sweetness in them, don't they? Mmm. All right. And the fresh bite of the herbs. Mmm. I'm Delicious. reaching over to you for the caramelized pear and brie. Here we go. Ooh. The brie. You had me at brie. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mmm. Mmm. And the seeds of the bread. Mmm. I was just going to say that along with the sweetness mm -hmm. of a caramelized pear, but it's not too sweet. Mm-mm. I don't we know which one that pinch like of salt. Better. Oh, my gosh. They're both so good. Mm. And that herbs. Mm. Yum. Okay. Yum is all we need to say. I love it when you come in. Thank you. It's great. Easy. If vegetarian. I can do it. Vegetarian. Again. So anyone can do it. And thank you so much for coming in. It's my great pleasure. I oh. love being here. Thank and you, Maria. I hope you all try this at home. It's wonderful. For the entire crew, myself and Anne, thanks for joining us. And remember, we really do have some of the best chefs right here in our own community. Thanks again. We'll see you next time on Community Cooking. Oh, my gosh. This is so good. If you'd like a copy of the recipe seen on this show, send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to the Office of Cable and Community Relations. That's 3350 Civic Center Drive, Suite 200, in Torrance, California, 90503. Be sure to note the show number displayed on the screen. And don't forget, you can find all the fresh ingredients used on today's show at the Farmer's Market. Visit the one here in Torrance at Wilson Park. That's located at 2200 Crenshaw Boulevard. They're open every Tuesday and Saturday from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m., rain or shine. And if you'd like to be a guest on our show, email us at communitycooking at torrentca.gov. And check us out online at youtube.com slash torrentcitycable. And like us on Facebook at Community Cooking TV.